tell me a little bit more. What's your elevated pitch on mTOR? Like, we know we want it to go down, and we know that protein dropping protein down helps drop it, at least in that fasting level. But we also want to have protein, so when we eat protein, we, it will spike. But it's kind of more of having a period where we don't and then a period where we do. So we're kind of creating this rebound effect. Can you talk a little bit more about that? You know, um, mTOR is very essential in the early stages of life because mm -hmm. uh, up to the age of 25, we need it. Uh, it helps to build muscles and right. helps to stimulate growth factors. So we need that. So that's very important. Um, after a certain age, the mTOR pathway works differently. It starts helping uh, accumulate um, other cells to grow as well. You know, abnormal cells, cancer cells, they require this pathway in order, you know, uh, to start stimulating their growth and their, you know, their spread is also done by mTOR pathways. So uh, it's when you have hypoxia, you know, HIF, it's, um, you know, hypoxia, less, uh, you don't have enough oxygen and accumulating in the cell correctly and it's not being utilized for energy at all, but it takes a different pathway and to lactic acid. So that's the problem we have when mTOR and lactic acid gets involved together. They seem to go into uh, and, and stimulate more of abnormal cells. And, but the mTOR pathway is controlled by you know, the types of proteins we accumulate in our body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, whey protein and milk protein and all these other proteins will, um, will lead to mTOR pathway. And one of the research done 20, 30 years ago was that if you balance it with a gelatinous food, like collagen or gelatin, anything that's gelatinous, it seems to negate the, uh, these factors in these proteins. So it balances the protein. So when I was working with athletes, for instance, and they were consuming a lot of these amino acids that are tryptophan, methionine, cysteine, and whey products, but they were also having a lot of issues with kidney problems. They were having issues with um, cardiovascular problems, these massive amounts of athletes. So um, you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you balance these amino acids. And the only way I was able to find that was in research was using gelatinous collagen. It seems to balance the negativity effects of the amino acids and it doesn't uh, stimulate mTOR. And I've seen it with hundreds of my cancer patients when I added collagen to their diet, they went back and had an MRI done some of them still continue doing PET scans, which I don't recommend, but the MRI showed that their cancer cells stopped growing and almost went into remission. And so regarding mTOR, insulin is going to drive up mTOR. So too much carbohydrate, too much, you know, glucose. And we know PET scans are basically giving yourself, they're giving you radioactive glucose and they're seeing where it's going because they know the cancer cells are going to take it up. So you're saying on one side, we can decrease some of the protein. The other side, we can modulate the carbohydrate in a, in a good range. And then number two is try to get more collagen-based amino acids, which aren't going to spike the mTOR as much. And do you also say you can still kind of be more ketogenic while taking collagen too? Absolutely, because, you know, as you know, ketogenic diets are basically two things, high fat and high protein. And that's how you, um, you know, stimulate the ketogenic uh, factors in the body. So there be, there be some people that would say high fat, but then some people say more moderate protein just because they're trying to modulate gluconeogenesis. And some people are talking about the fact that you can increase glucose a little bit just through gluconeogenesis. So, so yes. is there a percent protein that you like for a ketogenic template? You know, I've always uh, say that it's, again, the amount of energy that you expire and the type of physical activity you do mm -hmm. during the day. So if you're more of a weight lifter or more of a bicyclist or somebody, you're going to need a little more protein than somebody who's not working in exercise field as much. But you want to make sure that, you know, we found that after age of 60, the requirement for protein is much greater at that age than any other right. age. So you want to make sure when you're over 60, you start consuming more protein than fats. 
And the problem with fats is, you know, fats are very highly unstable, and, you know, unless you eat um, some saturated, saturated fats. fats, right? But there's also a minimum amount. They found that too much fats, of, even saturated fats, can cause problems. So you have to know how to control that, and you got to take certain antioxidants like vitamin E to help the lipid oxidation factors of yes, any vitamin fats. C, yeah. Yeah, so um, the one I found was really good is ghee butter. Ghee butter seems to give you uh, more balance. It has a lot of antioxidants, vitamin E, beta carotene, and it can, uh, it, it's clarified. So it is a different form of fat and it helps accumulate a fast metabolism in the body. And, uh, and so does MCT oil, you know, using those two will help with facilitate, but you don't want to take too much. You want to be in the right ranges. So I think fats are important, but don't overdo it with too much because it can cause later on with lipid oxidation and it doesn't make a difference what form of fat, fats because, and then you have free fatty acids, which are signaling factors to aging anyway.